Hello, I'm Jerry Kirkpatrick and I'm teaching the fundamentals of metal shaping. In almost every class that I teach, uh, there's always a couple of fellows that say that they have their own bead roller and that when they get ready to do a specific project that they have a tendency to mess it up because they don't have enough practice on the bead roller to get exactly the part that they need for their project. So if you make uh, several of these you'll have uh, plenty of practice. You can make them any size you want. All you need is a piece of 1100 50 thousandths thick 12 inches wide, 12 inches tall. I'll show you how to mark them out for the areas that you want to run the bead roller around. Put your flames or initials, whatever you want on them, and roll them out and uh, you'll have plenty of practice on your bead roller. So when you want to get started on your project, you'll have a good hand at it. In the introduction, I mentioned that the material that we're using is 1100 and is 50 thousandths thick. Uh, that's very important uh, in order to know how much movement the material will accept. Uh, you can use either 1100 or 3003. You can contact Aircraft Spruce at aircraftspruce.com and get this book. It, the book is only $13.50. It shows you all of the different alloys. It shows you all of the different heat treat designations. And you have to know what material that you're starting your project with in order to know how long you be able to work it. Now let's get on to the project. Okay. To start with, we have the piece of aluminum. I use a spacer three quarter of an inch wide and a sharpie. I just lay the sharpie on top of the three quarter inch spacer and just mark a line, a full length on all four sides. And then I use a piece of two and a half inch diameter and just lay that up against each of the corners. This will give me the line for the siding down tool to follow. Next, just a regular old roll of masking tape. Uh, the diameter doesn't matter. You can change that at a later date. Uh, if the first one you do doesn't come out the way you want it, you can change anything you want. I leave these back <coughs> about the width of the Sharpie so it comes out right on the edge. This is a fairly thin marker. And I like to go past the tangent point on each side that way I know where that radius starts to blend in. And then 
there you have it. Next thing we're going to do is remove each of the corners. Before making the final cut to the line, I like to remove as much of the excess material as possible, leaving not more than a quarter of an inch to uh, make the final cut through. And this is especially important with if you're using a pair of Dutchman's. After you have it trimmed fairly close to the line, then you can start your final cut. After blending in all of the corners on the belt sander, I deburr both sides and I use either the old style uh, deburr knife, a swivel tool, or use the file, a single cut file, to draw. and deburr. Okay, now that all of the edges have been deburred and hit with the sanding sponge, I turn the piece over, face all the markings face down, and I use a pattern that I made long ago uh, for doing these and lay that right on the on the piece square it up use a pair of pony clamps to hold it in place and start marking the flames And I don't finish off the tips because those are pretty much uh, freehand <clears throat> to make sure that I can return with the bead roller without removing the part from the bead roller. All right, let's start with the inside portion here. We're going to raise this section in here. So what I'm going to need is a 3-8 spacer that goes on first, then a regular beading die that'll go on. We'll tighten that up. Next goes an inch and an eighth spacer, and then with one of Lazzy's flat dies.
tighten that one up. Then we'll set the depth. What I want, now we've got to move that back, move that shaft back so it clears. I want to bring that down until it just touches. That gives us enough pinch to drive the piece forward. And then I'm going to pull it forward until this edge here is just the material thickness behind the bead. Tighten that up, and we're set. The first thing I want to do is line up this front edge on this line, and I like to try to stay down a slight amount. That way when I come around this corner, it gives me from the tangent point to the beginning of the bead a chance to line up my rolls. So first I'm going to tighten this right on the line. You give it about a half a turn. I'm going to bring my fence up until the part is straight. Tighten that up. And I want to push down on this to make a good crease in here. that until I get to the tangent point. Loosen this, get that out of the way, and then go around the corner. Until I get to the tangent again, bring up the fence. And all the time I'm holding this as level as possible. Now this last portion I do by eye, and I try to line this edge up with this first portion right here. And there you have it. Now for rolling the flames, we're going to be using the skateboard wheel and a, a flat washer. First, I use just a regular old skateboard wheel that I've inserted a uh, bushing in here so we have something to tighten down on. On the top, I use a uh, 3 8 spacer to get the uh, flat washer out to the center of the skateboard wheel. Uh, this is just a standard 3 quarter flat washer that I bored out to 7 8 and then sharpened it slightly but still have a slight radius on this edge so it doesn't cut. And then I use a 1 inch spacer to get me out past flush here. And then I set the depth, how deep it goes into the uh, skateboard wheel, and that should be it right about there. Now one thing that I have learned about uh, using the skateboard wheel is if you use a slight amount of baby powder on the wheel,
and then on the side of the piece that's going to be against the skateboard wheel I put baby powder on all of that area that will be covered by the flames so I'm going to be starting here coming all the way around here and when I get to this end I just reverse the motor on the uh, bead roller and then come back in. I never have to stop and change sides. I do everything uh, with the flat washer continuously. And I don't care if I get off of the line. Because it'll be gone when this is all done. This is the side you'll be seeing. For tipping the piece all the way around the edge, we want this to go down just about three-eighths of an inch. So what I use for doing that is a one-inch spacer on the bottom and then a flat washer that I've radius this corner and then one of Lazzy's flat dies. These dies I've had to modify for my machine. I've uh, drilled them out to 7 8 and also added a keyway right here so they don't slip. For the top, I use just a one inch spacer and one of Lazzy's flame dies. And then I pull the two down. I loosen the adjustment back there and I pull this back to where I have 3 eighths from the leading edge of this washer to the front edge of this washer. I have 3 eighths of an inch. Right there. Tighten that down. Pull this down until it just touches right about there and then I give it a half a turn so it really pinches the material and won't allow it to slip around. So then all I have to do is put that up against the fence, 
tighten that. Now the first time around, all I'm doing is pretty much marking the depth of what I want. So I'm only going to bring it up like 5 or 10 degrees. And I'm watching right in the center here of where, uh, especially when I come around this corner, that that portion is right in the middle. Okay, there's one time around. The next time, I'm going to bring it up just slightly more. And you'll notice... ...that when you start coming around these corners, you're going to get a pooch in here. Okay, I've been around it twice now. The next time I'm going to bring it almost all the way up. That's why I leave this surface flush. Uh, I don't have a bolt protruding out of here. There you can see there's quite a bit of distortion in this area. This is all going to be done by hand, all brought in. Uh, these are almost a tuck. So what we're going to do is shrink each one of these on a dolly. And that'll lower this also. Now to bring these edges down so they're flush with the uh, framework of the piece, <clears throat> I'm just going to use a rawhide mallet. switch over to a regular body hammer to start bringing these tucks in.
I'm not going to show you all four of them. Uh, you get the idea of what we're after here. Okay, it's getting me taking me 12 minutes to get all of these tucks pulled back in, and I'm now to a fairly uh, what I'd call a rough shape. Uh, you can see they're still pooching out, so I'll just use my rawhide mallet and go all the way around one time to get my final shape. Okay. There you have it. You can see all the corners are nice, <clears throat> same shape. You'll notice that I didn't spend much time on correcting the shape of the sides <clears throat> or any of the uh, flanges here. I spent most of the time developing the corner of uh, each, each one of the corners and the reason for that is that there is so much shape, so much material displaced up in this area that it moved this material out and this portion down in here had very little work so it stayed uh, pretty straight as you can see there that stayed pretty flat. This area here <coughs> got a lot of movement in it. So as I straighten this out, as I bring this back in to a flat panel, it's going to move those stresses out to these edges. So after I get this flat, then I can go in and start working the edges and get those to a, a constant shape. So all I have to do is lay it on the table, find out where I'm at, and then start moving these stresses around and I've got a, a high spot right here so just working with a rubber hammer and a shot bag you can see how much I've moved that already We're almost flat now. Here. And just take your time. It'll take you a while to learn where to hit. To move the material around to where you want it. So don't get in a hurry. It'll come. Alright, I'm going to finish this up uh, off screen and show you how it is when I get it flat. Okay, now that we've got all the stresses uh, moved around, uh, we haven't relieved them, we've just moved them so the piece is perfectly flat um, in this area here. Now we're going to work around the outside edge and get those exactly where I want those. So I'm going to use this round dolly and a rawhide mallet. This works just from the tangent point, meaning from here 
to here and then I'll change the dolly and we'll work the straights. Okay, I've got all of the corners nice and round, nice shape to those. Now we'll true up these sides. There you have it. Finished piece. Now we have it uh, cleaned up. I cleaned all the uh, markings off with the uh, lacquer thinner, both front and back. It's a finished piece. Okay, now that you get the idea of what we're after, um, don't feel that you're stuck with this shape or design. Uh, you can put a Chevy, Ford, Chrysler, Insignia in the center. You can make them as long as you want, tall as you want. Write your buddy's name in them, give it to him so he can put it in his garage. It's endless what you can do with these things. Uh, remember to look at my website at jerrykirkpatrick.com. Thanks.